Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home workshop. Uh, I'm Ben Crow, and I am taking one of our kit guitars, the SRP kit in this case, and turning it Cyberpunk 2077 because, because I have a limited tool palette with which to work. I'm, I'm playing with kit instruments at the point, at this point, and quite frankly, because I want it. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! By the end of this episode, we should have the two halves, if not together, pretty close to being together. Uh, onwards, onwards and upwards. Now, here is what we're playing with. Basically, we're gonna take a bunch of pieces of perspex that have been glued together. So this was my test from the last episode, which you need to go and watch. I'm properly trying to snap that. Doesn't wanna. Anyway, we're gonna glue a bunch together, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, like so. But in order to get to that, we need to make sure that the guitar is actually exactly as it is supposed to be. Now, I also, I also had the thought that possibly, possibly we could put some aluminium uh, along the edges. Uh, not all of the edges, just one or two, just to create a nice effect. Do I want to bother with that? I don't know. fail. That's going to happen a lot today. Okay, anyway, first things first, I am going to spot glue, no, let's not spot glue anything. Let's masking tape and super glue this body down in place so that I then have an accurate gap to which I can then fit everything. What are we going to do? There. Oops, all the way off, so it was lining up there. That one doesn't move. So that is, well, it's looking guitarish uh, and pretty cool. Let me know what you think. I'm going to, I'm going to have some fun. So the masking tape and super glue trick is going to keep that nice and solid and in place. And I'll be able to uh, play around without worrying about things moving on me. Okay. I'm not going to need all of this. Let's see where we get to. So this is a miniature table saw. 
uh, handmade, uh, actually, not by me, but it does the job very, very well. So the reality is, I don't have huge amounts of material to play with. So I want relatively small squares. And one strip will do four. Yeah. yeah. One strip will do the height four times. I don't know, that probably doesn't make sense. I might as well just cut lengthways. What I'm going to do is cut uh, essentially square strips of this and uh, make a bunch of those. I'm going to put in my isotunes. Uh, don't forget Crimson 10 gets you a tenner off a set of isotunes and some eye protection as well. Okay, so we're not quite square. Okay, that's looking better. Spot on. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm getting covered in little pieces of uh, molten plastic, so uh, the watch comes off. And uh, little pieces of molten plastic. I think I'm actually going to go full face shield um, because I have one and because that's better. So. Yeah, it's an air-fed mask and it works. So, goodbye. Now here comes the fun part. Uh, I've got these pieces, some double width. I've got some uh, narrower chunks of Perspex. These were just uh, sold as Perspex for uh, putting inside of picture frames and things. But the edges are straight off a saw and I need, I need to sand them at least flat. I don't need to polish them all the way up because uh, because I don't need to. The 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 glue that it, it essentially melts the perspex and flashes it off and gives us a nice uh, gloss with an itchy nose. It's a good thing I'm I'm holding a uh, a leveling beam. But anyway, I'm going to spend an hour or so polishing the edges of perspex, and you do not want to watch that. You. I'm going to go through the grits. This is yeah, 80 grit or so, uh, 320, maybe even go up to 800, but uh, the end result will be nice, square, flat, ready to glue pieces of perspex. Scintillating viewing, isn't it? At this stage, I've gone through and sanded uh, two edges of all of these things. Um, I'm going to do a little experiment to see what happens. <sighs> Essentially, if it's perfectly clear, then there's, the light is just going to go <clears throat> straight through it, and you're going to see each, each individual LED from the side, and it's going to be not as attractive. So it needs to be somewhat opaque. 
I'm wondering how opaque. Uh, I built a base for, actually the, no, both of them. I built a base for Goldfrapp's uh, bass player, Charlie Jones, and the it was entirely out of Perspex. And the control cavity, I actually ended up, because I didn't have the technology uh, or the, uh, the time to fully polish out the internal of that cavity, uh, I ended up chipping it with a with a probably a gouge or a V gouge or something, just tick, 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 lots of tiny little chips, and that diffused and made a fantastic effect from the uh, from the, the front of the instrument. And uh, I'm going to see what that would look like. Uh, but we're gluing up test pieces. Uh, that is just with a up to 320 grit. And then we're going to do a quarter one, and then a chipped, and then we'll see what we prefer. Lots of uh, lots of sanding involved, though. I don't think there's going to be much difference on this one, but we'll see. Two coarse edges. No, there's not much difference there. I have, however, had an idea. Let's let that cure for a bit. I have here a record power professional engraver that I thought might just come in handy for this build. And I've just had an idea. Let's see what we've got here. I don't need these gloves on anymore, do I? No. I'm gonna go with a fairly coarse, ooh, okay. I've never used this particular. Tool before. <clears throat> that just dropped in the bottom of a large bucket of vintage tools that I've brought home to potentially restore for my shop at some point. Poop. Nice little saw. Ooh, draw knife. Mm. Oh, hey. Success. <sighs> Okay, so the thought was some sort of a engraved pattern on the inside edges, on all four inside edges, and then uh, the light would diffract through that and create something interesting. Uh, let me see. Let me see what it's like doing it by hand. It's also not actually precise enough. It's a computer pattern. It's a. It's a something that has to be absolutely spot on, or it just is obviously not. Back with the experiments. Mm. I'm regretting certain thoughts. Okay, so what I've done is I've sanded down all of the parts. Uh, I've got some, some bits sanded to 320, some to 60, and I've just been playing with engravers and graving tools and bits and pieces like that to see if a, see if I could get an interesting texture under LED light because uh, if it's perfectly transparent, then it's perfectly transparent. Uh, if it's opaque, you could get a better look, as you can see there. So the light's gonna be going through. Um, anyway, now the full chipped out, graved pattern doesn't really do it for me. We're gonna go 
for a, a nice uniform 80 grit scratch pattern uh, on all four sides, on all four facets of this piece and just glue it together. If we put enough glue in there, it works, it works really well. So uh, on with the build. So a lot of you asked about this uh, new workshop that is semi-erected behind me and uh, how I was going to deal with everything and the total lack of light, etc. And uh, well, yes, I'm putting windows in the back wall. Uh, I want to see the cows and I want as much light as possible. Let's cut some holes in a wall. For all of you doubting Thomases who shouted at me for covering up the view and for not having windows on that back wall, I present you a great big hole in the wall. Uh, I've got a little bit more sanding to do. There will be movement soon. I swear it. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. I take it all back. I was standing here laboriously hand sanding each of those edges and looking up, I saw this and that. That gives me this effect. And that is exactly what we want. I'm somewhat ashamed that it took me a whole day to realize. Anyway, sanding. So I have some gaps, some odd sized gaps actually. I'm gonna to have to cut some more material. Uh, there are narrower gaps there, which I have this material for. I'm gonna slice that soon, but I want smaller squares and different sizes. So there's gonna be four different sizes, maybe more of Perspex. You don't need to see that though. It's just gonna all come together. And then that corner, that's that's the bit, actually those two corners, where I'm gonna have, a, have to do something interesting. But that's kind of what I thrive on, so yeah.
as with everything I have ever started, this is gonna be somewhat time consuming. You can see we've got different shapes, different lengths of rectangles, lots of tiny little squares in there. Um, and I'm gonna build up the whole thing. The end result, when that facet is sanded back and cleaned, you're gonna see all of these squares with the, with the LEDs popping out. And that's only the tiniest part. And yes, I am doing it properly underneath the pickup as well, even though you're not gonna see it from either side. It just has to be done. What do you think? I think I'm crazy. I really do. But, you know, that's why you're watching. If you slow down too much, it's uh, the perspex cures and holds your saw blade. Ah, I slowed up. Nope. We're good. Now, that was ever so slightly tedious, but the end result. So there's that joint, there's lots of bits and pieces. I would love to have the time to individually set an individual height for each block below the level of the guitar and then flood the top of that with resin. That is not going to happen on this project. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen on another project though. Now I need to glue it all in. Uh, I am going to have a strip of LEDs going alongside the whole zigzag. Now the problem with this is that LEDs fail and die over time. I need to have access to those. So instead of putting the guitar together and then just flooding it with, with thin resin, which would absolutely work and do the job perfectly fine, I'm going to have to glue it to one side of the body and then uh, essentially there's going to be a bolting action so that I can take the whole guitar apart if required to replace the LEDs at some point. Uh, again, I'm keeping this guitar, it's going to be coming to shows with us um, and living on my wall here at home because it's mine. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, that's what we're doing. So we're not using resin. I've also just been told by a, some, some horror stories in the comments about the, uh, the stuff that I was planning on using to glue all of this together. And I'm not going to use it because quite frankly, it's a little bit, well, super glue does the job just as well. So I'm going to be playing with a lot of super glue, windows open, uh, et cetera. First thing I need to do though is tape this so it doesn't move and then tape uh, non-stick tape to the other side of the body so we don't inadvertently glue it all together because that would be annoying. Okay, so that's going to hold that in place. I need to tidy this workbench up. Easy. <laughs> this looks so cool. Come check this out. Isn't that cool? All right, so this, uh, what's it called? Tuck tape. Stuff. It's used in uh, resin work quite a lot. It is also something to which superglue does not stick. 
which is great. In reality, what I should have done is made up several sheets that were pre-glued off-site and then put them in. Because that way I can glue them all together out of situ, shall we say. I'm feeling a distinct lack of coffee in my system and I don't know what I want to do. Coffee and thought. There we are. I'm taking, I'm gonna to have to individually glue each piece to this side uh, because that's just the way it has to be done. So, well, let's figure out how to do that. All of that taping was unnecessary, but that's fine. How's about, okay. So, I'm gonna tape a little bit more solidly along here. That's in there now. We'll tape that to this. And then essentially, everything comes away. Okay. Okay, everything's where it's supposed to be. And I can then remove the individual pieces individually. Ha 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 ha. Why did that make me so happy? Do I want that then? No. I want that somewhere else. Okay, you stay there. And I'm gonna do this from this corner out. Can you tell I'm feeling somewhat confident about this situation? On we go. Now, outside corner equals inside corner. We're fine. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. Yes, we're good. I am going to individually sand all of the tops of all of the pieces, and because I'm now doing it sideways, I'm going to create different levels just underneath the top of the guitar. So not only do we have squares, but we've got different levels. I'm not gonna flood it with super glue. Uh, or epoxy or anything like that. The only thing I need to think about really is, is that. I need to make sure that all the way along the edge is a nice enough finish, because that's gonna be exposed. But it means we're gonna have a physical variation in height as well as the, the visual representation of the squares and rectangles, etc. And it's gonna look stunning, or, or it's not gonna look stunning at all and we're just gonna fail utterly but with, you know, a Cyberpunk 2077 style. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be nice. Cool.
How many of you have dogs that are now annoyed? Please forgive me. All right, I've obviously got some fitting to be done. We're, we're high there, we're a bit high there actually as well. Um, the glue has, has messed with things, but we have Well, <laughs> we have a little bit of extra weight, I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah. What a process. I honestly, where are you? There you are, hi. I honestly don't know what I was thinking. But you know, we're, we're, we're there. It's a bit bright in here, but let's, uh, let's have a look anyway. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. Back in the vice she goes. Oh, where's the thing? There's the thing. You just can't beat blue LEDs. I think the white's almost my favorite. I feel a sense of achievement. Let me know what you think in the comments below. <clears throat> Have I gone too far? Have I gone too far? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, maybe, ah, we'll see. Uh, I have got a long weekend of shed building ahead of me. Uh, you are probably not going to get another one of these videos until a week, so uh, Saturday, so a week on Saturday. We're, we're currently averaging one a week because there's too much going on. I'm sorry. Click like and subscribe anyway, please. Thank you, please. thank you, thank you. I am really, really happy with what this is looking like. Like, super duper happy. I just said super duper happy. I'm gonna come back later in the evening. Uh, I'm gonna go for a ride, relax a little bit, have some pizza, maybe a beer after the ride. Don't drink and drive, people. And when it's a little darker, I'll take some glamour shots of this uh, sans external light to see a little bit better what it's going to look like. So that'll be, that'll be here. It's, it's evening, i.e. nearly nine o'clock at night because summertime. But my studio, my studio is dim. And here we have a guitar. I think that purple's my favorite color. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Have I gone too far? Have I hit it right where it's supposed to be? I don't know. Frankly, I'm just having fun. And speaking of fun, have a look at the back. Unfortunately, I am going to be chopping all of these pieces off, but I love the way protruding opaque 
acrylic takes on the light. Also, sound holes, exhaust ports, all of that jazz. Oh, hell yeah. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of what I am doing here. Uh, I know it's just a kit build, but quite frankly, I'm having the time of my life. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.